Hi everyone, Angie here from Bobo Design Studio, and I am going to be reviewing these two portable printers, the Instax um, by Fujifilm and the Polaroid High Print. And if you've been following me for some time um, or purchased any of my products, specifically the Wanderlust Passport, you know that I absolutely love carrying a portable printer with me. And two years ago, I did a review with the Instax printer, the HP Sprocket, and the Polaroid Zip. And it's probably my best performing blog. It brings in a lot of traffic, but a lot of people genuinely wanna know which printer is best for them. So it's been quite some time. I, it's still one of my most popular questions, so I wanted to answer, does the Fuji Instax still hold up? And how does it compare to the Polaroid high print? So let's dig in. So to start, um, in about two years ago, I did a review on the Fuji Instax printer with the HP Sprocket and the Polaroid Zip. And hands down, this has been my favorite. In fact, I use this all the time still to this day. It's a workhorse, I've never had any problems with it. And really the only reason I'm doing this review of the new printer is because, um, two reasons. One, a lot of people are unable to find this when they reference the blog post. And two, uh, my friend Peggy over at the Pigeon Letters asked if I had tried out the Polaroid high print, and I have not, so I thought this was a great time to try two new printers. So, uh, we will start with the Instax first. So the Instax that I have is this special edition um, collaboration with Nintendo. The only reason that I really got this one is because it was the cheapest one I could find on Amazon. Um, and it's just, I think, because it's a limited edition collab. So you can use it with your iPhone, so I'm operating on an iOS, but you can also use it with your Link. At the end of the day, though, the hardware is the same. The only thing that's different is probably some of the functionalities when the app which aren't bad, they're actually kind of fun. I have not used them myself, but we're gonna go here into my phone. It is this Instax for Nintendo Switch app. And there's so many different little functions. You can add stickers, there's collages. I haven't really used any of them. All I've done is the simple print so far. So in order to connect your device, all you gotta do is hold this button down and then it's gonna start pairing. So here I've got no film, we're gonna load some film in there. Um, that's the device, and it says how much charge it has. So let's put some film in. Now this uses the standard um, Fuji Instax film that you can get anywhere, Amazon, Target, Walmart, and this is probably one of my favorite things about this is that you can get the film anywhere. So for me, when I'm doing a lot of traveling um, and I'm using my Wanderlust Passport, being able to locate film refills on the road is super important to me. Get rid of this little protective cover. So now we're gonna go here and I'm gonna pick two pictures. Typically how it works is you would just, um, if you wanna do a simple print, you hit that, and it's gonna pull up your camera roll. But for me, I already pulled the pictures that we're gonna use. So I picked two photos that both printers are going to print off of, just so we can compare. I'm gonna do one that's more of like a nature scape, and then I'm gonna do one that has high contrast colors so we can kind of see the scope of how well that these print. So now I've got my image. I can hit print and I have options to add text. I can edit, meaning that I can come in and rotate, I can zoom. This is actually really cool, I like this function because sometimes when I put it in my passport, I wanna use this white area to write. So being able to orient the photo is really cool. Um, I can add a filter if I want, I can do any kind of color correction. It's all really simple and easy to use. Let's get this back down to zero. And once it's ready, you just hit print. You'll see that it's transferring. And we'll let it do its thing. 
I love that like instantly you get your photo. And this is the other image and we're going to do no editing to it. We're just going to hit print. So here are the final images. You can see the quality is really great. Um, I love, it kind of has a little bit of a vintage feel, but it's still really crisp and true to the original image. Um, so I love that. Now let's go on to the Polaroid high print. This thing looks really cool. It has this awesome like Oh, wait, I already got it dirty. This awesome retro vibe with this rainbow coloring on the end. Um, it's a little bit bigger compared to the Instax. I mean, it's probably comparable to, I have an iPhone 11 Pro, so they're roughly the same size. Um, few things right off the bat that I was not a huge fan of. One is the size. Even though it's really sleek, it's just a little bit bigger. Um, it doesn't fit in a lot of the kind of uh, travel pouches that I have um, that I want to use for this. Like I have some little hard case zip ups that I got on Amazon that work really great with this. So I don't have anything for this. Um, I also found that when I put it in my bag, this kept opening on its own. So this is the um, entry point for your cartridge, which I'm also going to show. And you know, I'm very paranoid about possibly this opening and getting gunk in there and or snapping off. So this kind of was not that great. Um, and then this, this is the film cartridge. So every time you go through your 10 photos, you have to put a new one of these in there. And this just seems really excessive um, because all that you get out of this is your image, right? So after this little tiny stack of paper is gone, you're left with this roller and all this plastic. Not to say that the Instax doesn't have any um, waste, but it's um, just less moving parts. You know, if you melted it all down, maybe it's the same, but just something about this just doesn't seem very appealing to me. And the other thing that I don't like about this is so far, I have been unable to locate refills for the Polaroid high print in any store, like Target or Walmart. Actually, I haven't gone into a Walmart, but Target doesn't have it, nor do any of the drug stores, as where you can easily find this anywhere. So this is already like not my favorite thing, but let's take a look at the print quality and decide if it's worthwhile. So going back to our Things that we're judging this by, it's print quality, the app interface, um, print speed, and then the accessibility for the film. So I'm gonna turn this bad boy on right now. Just hold that down. We're gonna open up the app. So if you come here, this is Polaroid High Print. And the app is beautiful. Like, I just love how it looks. It's really clean and crisp. Now I'm gonna go back. I'm going to try and find the same photos that I printed. Here's one. So here is the photo. And just like the Fuji Instax, you do have some options here for editing. So we're going to hit that. And down here, we've got a lot of different options. I would say it's a little bit more complex than what we've got in the Fujifilm. Um, it's more comparable to any standard photo editing app that you've got on your phone. So that's really nice. But we're not going to use any edits, we're going to use just the original photo so we can compare with the Instax. So I'm gonna hit print here and we will let it do its thing. So it's spooling up, processing, and you'll notice something. This is gonna take a while. You'll see that it's printing the image almost like a CMYK. I don't even know if that's like the right way to describe it, but it's basically printing each color layer. I 
And there you are. There's one photo. You'll see that this is quite a bit larger. I think it's like two and a half by three inches. So it's a little bit bigger um, than the Instax, which we'll do a side by side in a sec. Um, but it's also a sticker paper, which is pretty cool. And here is a real time side by side of the Instax and the Polaroid printing at the same time. And you'll see that the Instax can print twice as many photos as the Polaroid printer. And it took about a minute and a half to print one Polaroid photo. I will say one thing, this printer is already feeling a little bit warm. I'm not sure how it's gonna hold up if I wanted to do like 10 photos. Well, one that would probably, I'm not even kidding you, take me about 20 minutes to do because it takes almost a minute and a half from the time I hit print to the time that it's done per photo. So if I wanted to do 10 photos, that's gonna take me a long time, but it's already warm. And the Polaroid Zip, which was, I don't know if that's considered the first gen of this, um, after you did like two or three pictures, you got a notification on the app that's like, you gotta wait because the thing has to cool down. So um, have not had that yet here, but it is already feeling a little bit warm. So now that we've got the side by side, let's compare the actual photos. So these, are the images from the Polaroid. You'll see that it's got this peelable back. You, know, you just kind of crack that. And then you have a little peelable sticker. So this almost feels like an actual photo, which is kind of cool. Um, and then we have the Instax. So obviously the first things that we see are the sizes. The um, Instax is quite a bit smaller than the Polaroid. You have a little bit more edge-to-edge -edge real estate as we're here, you've got the border. Um, in terms of color, the thing that I did not like about um, printers that use this zinc paper, which is called Zero Ink, and they use a fancy word called zinc, was that the images tend to read very orange. Like it picked up a lot of orange hues. I don't really see that with this, which is fantastic. So here you can see it's pretty crisp um, and it's really clear and there aren't really tones that shouldn't be there. Like I feel like this is pretty true to the image. So this is the Instax. In comparison, you can see they're pretty close. There is a little bit of an orange tinge here. This reads a little bit cooler but you know, the print quality is pretty good in both. I liked this photo because um, this is actually in Zion. So those rocks are pretty red. Um, the particular filter I used on the image kind of made everything a little bit more muted, but this photo in the Polaroid still picks up quite a bit of the red. You don't see it as much in the Instax, the um, shadows and the black point is a lot darker, but it's almost forgivable because you're expecting that from an Instax. Um, but the print quality is really good in both. So at the end of the day, based off of all the things that we're judging, the app, um, the print speed, the print quality, I still think this is the best one. It's significantly cheaper. It comes out to about 60 cents or less per photo as where this is about a dollar per photo, not cheap. Hard to get the film when you're out on the road or you don't have access to getting things mailed to you. And honestly, this thing will last you forever. If this is any indication, I'm almost upset that I bought this because now I have two printers and this one still works amazing. <laughs> so there you have it, the Instax versus the Polaroid. Hands down, this is still my favorite and I love it so much. I'm sort of sad because 
this one worked great. My old one worked great, and now I have two, but it's always good to have a backup. Maybe I'll do a giveaway with this one, I don't know. But thank you so much. Please feel free to let me know if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments, send me a DM at Bobo Design Studio. Um, I have a lot of thoughts and a lot of good uses for these. So uh, if you've got any questions, let me know. Otherwise, Instax.